Hey guys, what's up? Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. I'm back in action after moving apartments last week. And thanks for bearing with me through the silent period. Let's just jump right into this week's tutorial and get going. Now this is all about using reactor sound generators, things like metaphysical function, scroll, space drone, to create kind of looped ambience, or ambient and drone loops, you might say. Now, of course, a sound generator will, will create sound the moment you load it. So something like metaphysical function, which we're seeing here, the moment it is active and the track is active, it's creating sound. It's not waiting for any input from you. And for the most part, these are ad libitum sounds. In other words, they're not really rhythmic. And some of them are, are more active than others. As you can see, there's automation dialed in for these various oscillators uh, and even for the effects section, which is kind of leading to this evolving sound. But against a groove, this may or may not work. So if I play against a groove, and I'm going to get out my previous work here. If I play against a groove, get some kind of interesting textures against that groove, but we might want to make this conform more specifically to the groove we're working with. So what we're going to do is bring in a different reactor ensemble to work with metaphysical function and basically take little snippets of its audio and repeat them. And this is another ensemble that you've seen before, it's Fast FastFX. Uh, which we've covered before. Now we've covered both of these of course and if you need a refresher I will put annotations in this video so that you can click on that click on those and uh, go to the original videos. But now what I'm going to do is uh, first deactivate the audio engine just so we can do this without listening to a metaphysical function uh, keep droning on, literally droning on. Uh, and I am going to go into the structure by clicking on this edit mode toggle to the left of the snapshot and then I'll click on metaphysical function in the breadcrumb trail. And then you see we're basically at the top level. We have a very simple signal flow. It's metaphysical function into these two outs. Now if I click on this, I go below the surface and see that this is actually a very complex instrument. But for our purposes, all we need to know is that it's metaphysical function into these two outs. And we would like to use fast effects with this and basically put this just right in the signal path between the metaphysical function ensemble and the outs. So what I'm going to do here is right click in the structure, go import ensemble, electronic instruments volume two, and fast effects 1.3. Now you could also select this from the side pane. This is just a different way of doing it. Close out the side pane browser there, just for visual simplicity. Drag this uh, between the outs and metaphysical function, and then we need to connect these, right? So I will click on the left out in metaphysical function, hold my mouse cursor down, drag over to the in and release, and there that, that black will indicate that it's now connected. Uh, and do the same for the right out, and then I'll do the same for metaphysical or for fast effects outs connecting them to the audio outs. And now when we click back on the panel, uh, I have been fortunate this time because what it's done is it has put metaphysical function here at the top and fast effects here at the bottom, which is exactly what I want. Before when I've done this, it has kind of jumbled these all together. All you need to do is click on the header and drag it to where you want it to be. It will snap into place and you'll be good to go. But now I will reactivate the audio engine uh, and you see metaphysical function going, but you don't hear it. And now if I get the master transport going, here's what we hear. Now that's clearly not metaphysical function. In fact, that is the loop player, which, metaphys which uh, FastFX defaults to as an audio source. What we want to do is get FastFX listening to metaphysical function. So we will click audio or, or on this in one, two. This is, uh, sets up FastFX to accept audio from its stereo ins. The moment we do that, it begins to register metaphysical functions audio. It's not changing it in any way though, it's just registering it. And so now our uh, ensemble is set up. And now what we need to do is to get FastFX to chop up part of Metaphysical Function's audio and create a loop that we want to use. So let's select a different snapshot. Let's go to say Snapshot 67, which is Victim. This is kind of cool because it has some backward masked vocals in it. Interesting kind of deep house texture if you like. And the moment I hit enable in this freeze module, which is what I'm going to use to repeat the sound, it will begin to repeat. So there you go. Now that's at a quarter note loop. I might want to make it a slower loop, so I might want to make it a half note. So that's kind of interesting. Now this is trial and error. This is, this is an inexact science. You just kind of try and catch little pieces of audio as it's going. And when you find something you like, you can move on to creating a loop out of it. A 
Okay, now I quite like that. This might be uh, good against our groove. So now it's repeating. And now what I'm going to do is just drop this level down because we're going to set up another audio track to record this. Now in this case, this is already set up, but I have, I have created an Ableton Live audio track. In input, I have set it, set it to uh, record Reactor 5. Uh, and it is armed for recording. And then in the punch in and punch out section, I'm going to set it to record within this space where the loop brace is. So I'm just going to select punch in and here it's set to this position 33. I'll also activate punch out and that will set to four bars. And then when I get my master transport going uh, and I play this, it will begin to record the loop. But one thing we have to do is go back into reactor and we need to bring this level back up. Higher is generally better with this, uh, as long as you're not clipping. So there it is. Now, let's record this. So let's uh, go to our audio track, get this master transport going, and when I start this, you'll see the loop being recorded in here. Here we go. Now it will keep going because I've, I had that set to loop, but once loop is unchecked, it will stop after four bars. And there you see it stopped. And now I can go back into my reactor track and deactivate this to save CPU cycles because now we've already rendered this to a loop. And you see it here, very interesting stuff. Now I can come into my Ableton Live clip and set this to loop uh, any, anywhere that I want really. And what's great about this, if you're using Ableton Live, is that you can move this, you can move these around so you could uh, set this to start anywhere you want. You might want to set it to start before one of these uh, transients here. Or you might want to loop, you might want to move it around and get some kind of rhythmic pushing and pulling going on. Now that's kind of interesting. Now one thing I should note is that I have a, an auto filter on here which is useful for pulling out different parts. You might want to turn that off at the beginning just to, just to position yourself uh, within the loop when you're, doing, when you're kind of adjusting these start positions. But again, this is an inexact science. It's all trial and error. So what you want to do is just get in there and start experimenting with different snippets and different loops and moving these start positions around. Now to review what, what we've done here is we've set up meta metaphysical function, we've connected it to FastFX, and we've used FastFX freeze function to freeze part of metaphysical function's audio and to repeat it. And then what we've done is we've set up an audio track to record that repeated audio into a loop and then we've adjusted that loop to our taste. Now this is of course uh, can be vastly improved just with further tweaking getting different audio. Uh, it's kind of trial and error as I said but this is a lot of fun to use with these sound generators and you can do it with metaphysical function, you can do it with Scruel uh, for, the, for the adventurers because Scruel is no joke, uh, Space Drone or get into the Reactor user library and check out some of those. So I hope you've enjoyed this. This is a wonderful way to impose structure on chaos in Reactor. And isn't that really what it's all about? Structure onto chaos. In any case, guys, thanks again for waiting it out with me. I appreciate you being with me. I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.